This episode of Retro Blasting is brought to you by Yojo Outlet and Museum Center. With over 6,500 vintage toy parts available on eBay every day, Yojo Outlet is the best source, not just for G.I. Joe parts, but for any toy line you can think of. We've been buying from them for years, and when we see that Cobra logo underneath the item, we know we're getting accurate descriptions and fast, reliable shipping. We weren't paid for this endorsement. We weren't given free stuff for this endorsement. We just like Yojo Outlet that much. Yojo Outlet is not a chop shop. They know vintage toys, and when it comes to vintage toys, knowing is the entire battle. It's the wickedest weapon yet, you know. Rattler's gonna get G.I. Joe. I love G.I. Joe vehicles, but I hate repairing them. And today we have one of the most notorious G.I. Joe vehicles in the Hasbro lineup, the Cobra Rattler. This Rattler was my brother's in 1984 or 85. I can't remember exactly when he acquired it. And it was the only major G.I. Joe airplane we had growing up, so it got a lot of use. Uh, it's seen better days, but it is a notoriously finicky and screwy airplane, and one of the most easily breakable things on it that most examples don't have intact anymore are the landing gears. As a matter of fact, when the G.I. Joe Cobra Rattler was re-released in the 25th anniversary line in 2007 or 2008 as a Target exclusive, they had not figured out any way to improve on that design, and the landing gear remained a fragile and easily breakable piece. And my brother's is no different. The front landing gear, miraculously, is intact, but the rear landing gears are toast. If you look up here, you'll see that I have an intact Rattler uh, as part of my collection, and it has its landing gears completely intact. And they stay down in the permanent position all the time. However, my brother's, for whatever reason, before we stopped playing with it, the uh, front landing gear was raised up into the body of the airplane. And I have no intention of trying to pull it back down, because it could break. So what we're going to do is we're going to repair this Rattler and install new rear landing gears and put them in the up position, so that by the time this restoration is done, we'll have one that's landing and one that's in flight. Additionally, I've also got to repair the rear tail assembly, um, but we'll get into that more in a minute. So here we go. So before we get started, I want you all to understand something. This is going to be a repair session. I'm not going to do a full restoration on my brother's childhood Rattler. I just want to get the broken pieces working again. That's it. I'm not going to be doing a lot of heavy cleaning or restickering or anything like that. I just want to see if I can get this thing back in a decent, presentable shape. And the first challenge that I have is this tail assembly. So let me remove the pieces that I can remove before we get started. There aren't many. I'm going to remove these engine cowlings. If I can get them off without breaking these tabs. Everything about the... Oh, Everything about the Rattler is just fragile. All right, now I'm going to remove the engines themselves. You know, when I was a kid, you could just pop these out. Not anymore. There we go. They have these very fragile, easily stressed tabs. Typical Hasbro. I'm going to remove these two engine pieces. And this one was already giving me a little bit of help. As you can see, this one has a, a broken tab. Um, I'm not going to bother replacing that part. That's a childhood original, and it works just fine once it's inside and underneath the cowling. So, and then this piece. Okay, so now that's stripped. Um, this cockpit is two pieces. It has the hatch that lifts up from the back, and as you can see, ours still has both hinge pieces on the back, which is really good. Uh, the front piece just sort of clips in. Uh, this one also still has all three tabs intact, so we're going to set that to the side, get that out of the way. I don't know if there's an advisable or even safe way to remove this. There we go. That's off and out of the way. I would really like to get this piece off, which is the rear turret. 
go. Just lifts out with a little bit of coaxing. And that's really, that's the shell. Now look at this stress mark here on this tail fin. Uh, because the Rattler had this very elaborate tail fin assembly, if you stored it in a toy bin like we did and anything shifted and landed on top of it, the tail would stress and bend. And if I was to point this at you dead on, you might see that this tail fin actually sways out farther than it should because of that, that uh, prolonged pressure. So I'd like to replace this tail fin. And thankfully, uh, the guys at Yojo Outlet and Museum Center had a tail fin that had come in and we are able to use it for this restoration. Um, this tail fin is not perfect. Uh, it does have some stressing going on right here. And I believe it has a small, right there it's gonna be hard to see, but it, that's actually a very small crack uh, in the tail fin, but it's microscopic and, and I don't think for the purposes of display that it's ever going to get worse. And on top, you can see that it doesn't have those extreme stress marks uh, that the uh, childhood one has. So we got to get that one off and put this one on. But that's where I get worried because this, this rattler rattles like crazy. It is just a flimsy, brittle machine. Uh, so this is going to be uh, interesting, and I hope I don't break my toy in the process. Now you'll notice on this tail fin, the one that hasn't been attached to the plane yet, that it snaps in with a fitting on the back side. This is actually facing the rear of the aircraft. The front has an extension on the plastic uh, that would then uh, slot in and then you or slot upward and then you would snap this piece into place. So that means that this has the same configuration and we have to find a way to get that off the plane, uh, which is gonna be easier said than done. The last time that we worked on GI Joe vehicles, we worked on the Cobra Claw. And you might remember that I used a screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver wrapped in painter's tape. Well, I've since annotated that video online if you go back to watch it because one of uh, our awesome subscribers, uh, he told me that one of the best things to use for trying to separate GI Joe plastic tabs was actually, um, trim panel removers for cars. And it just so happens that because I have a classic car, I have trim panel removers. I have a whole set of them. So I brought this in to see if I could use it to safely remove this tail fin from this Rattler. Uh, the tab is at the back in this kind of slot. This is the smallest uh, trim panel remover I have, and it just fits in there. So I'm gonna try and use this first. If it doesn't work, I'm going to have to go back to the screwdriver method. I don't think it can get the purchase that it needs. All right, I tried to do it with the uh, other tool, as you saw, but it's not going to work for this application. So I've wrapped a flathead screwdriver in painter's tape. We're going to see if we can't get this tail fin off. Boy, it doesn't want to come out. God, I hate G.I. Joe vehicles. All right, so it's out. Just took a little bit of finagling with that screwdriver and it popped right out, which is good. And you can see that the Rattler, it's a finicky beast. We were already seeing uh, areas of stress where there could be potential chipping, uh, air, uh, chipping marks going on if I'd done this wrong. Uh, I don't remember if that was there before I started the repair or not. I'll have to go back to the video and review it and look. But um, the Rattler is just not going to cooperate with you very well. So just be warned. All right, so here's the new tailpiece, which is also an old tailpiece. And you can tell by the matching uh, colors. So we're going to slot that in with this wide part right here and then we're going to press in 
on the back and snap in the new tailpiece. All right, so there's our Rattler fitted with its new tailpiece, which is great. And now comes the really unfun part. These landing gears. These landing gears broke constantly on these Rattlers. And as you can see, these were no different. Uh, my brother and I were probably just trying to deploy them and snap, they came right off. And the reason they came right off is because this intact one, that post is not it's not very robust, so they're not going to hold up to a lot of abuse. Uh, so the first thing that uh, I thought of when I thought of this Rattler was I want to fix those landing gears. One of the first steps in order to get to the lower landing gears is to get the underbelly of the Rattler off. And the first step to do that is to remove these jet engine cowling pieces that are on the front of the Rattler. I've already removed them because it's a little finicky and I had to concentrate, but I found that the best tool to do this because they are attached via these little clips as with everything, but they have these indentations in the side. So when they're buried inside the fuselage of the Rattler, which you can see here, if I flip these wings up, I've discovered that the best way to pop those off is you have to get something down in there to break the clip, or not break the clip, but Put pressure on the clip so you can lift it up. If you have a Swiss Army knife and you have the tweezers for a Swiss Army knife, they fit perfectly into that groove. And then you can put them down into the slot like this until it hits about here and then pry upwards and pull them out. So that's the first step I did was I popped off the two engine pieces and now I'm trying to get this underbelly off. Uh, I think I need to focus on the two tabs underneath this side because the two tabs that hold it on underneath this side are way under there and if I tried to force this thin piece of plastic this way it could crack and break everything. Uh, so what I've done first is I've relieved pressure on the sides by popping two tabs on either side here with the car trim uh, remover wedge um, but I'm still trying to get to these because these are what's really holding it on I could pop this side off as well but there would be no point because there are two tabs underneath this piece they're underneath these two pieces of plastic that are part of this underbelly that are holding it on so I've separated it a little bit here and I'm just gonna keep gingerly working with it uh, with this tool and just determination until I get it off, so stay tuned. So using this tool uh, th as a wedge and just very carefully, you know, you, you gotta feel this out. This isn't something that you can just take an instruction and do. You've kinda gotta be careful and, you know, sort of sense the material and the plastic and things like that, but as soon as I was able to kinda get this front end toward the nose of the plane to give a little bit and gently push these two um, retaining tabs out away from the fuselage everything started to come free and so now what I can do is just very carefully release the rest of this assembly there's one more tab on this side I hope comes free There we go. As you can see, the wings of the Rattler are held together by an actual metal rod uh, that has a square key. Kind of a cool little assembly feature of the Hasbro Rattler. And remember, this was something that you put together yourself. It didn't come like this. You had to actually put this together and thread the rod through the wings and everything. Or your parents did it on Christmas morning. All right, so the next step will involve removing the uh, remnants of the landing gears from this piece. Now, this one is going to come out pretty easily. However, this one, it appears that we attempted to glue this broken one back together. And so this one is stuck in there.
now we've finally got the broken piece that was glued in 30 years ago drilled out. Uh, we've got the, the underbelly off and it's intact. And so now we can put on our, uh, our replacement landing gears. Now these are vintage originals. They are not fakes. Uh, I found them on uh, eBay. And so what we're going to do is just slot them into uh, the holders underneath the, uh, the fuselage. I want to be careful because I don't want to, you know, break them on arrival. I mean, as you can see, they're already wanting to just resist the whole process. This was not a well thought out system. But keep in mind, this is as far as they're going to go for our purposes. They're going to stay like this on the underbelly so that they match the front landing gear. This is going to be our flying example. You do not want to move the Rattler landing gears a lot. You just can't play with them. You choose one position and then you stick to it. <clears throat> yeah, they look good to me. All right, so the next step is to reassemble the airframe. This is locked in properly on this metal rod, which is a square key. Uh, the front of the plane is going to be like this. So this is going to set about like, uh, let's see, like that sets in a, there's an inset in the side of the plane. Makes it obvious where those, uh, where this uh, sort of lip sits. You want the, the larger part of the disc on the inside of the fuselage and the rest of the wing goes outward. When you're actually working with it, it's, it's fairly straightforward. Okay. So now that's together. Testing movement. Making sure that's the correct orientation for the wings with the flaps towards the back. Or ailerons. All right, so now we get to put the underbelly back on. It's gonna go with the landing gear toward the back and you can always remember that by lining up the missile rack attachments with the ones on the wings. Uh, the way this works is the larger tabs go in first underneath the fuselage and the smaller tabs get snap fit. There are side tabs that have to be taken into consideration. requires a little fiddling or a lot of fiddling in this case. That's the sound of Hasbro plastic snapping. I think that's it. Let's test our wings. Our wings are moving. Oh, that's not good. That's what I thought. This ring came out on the one side. So now we have to try and fit it. Come on. There we go. Now let's see if this will work. There we go. The next step is going to be this windshield. Um, I know that we said this was a repair thread and not a restoration thread, but this windshield looks pretty gnarly. So what I'm gonna do is just give it a quick polish with some uh, Novus and see if we can't clear up some of this, 
this fogginess. I'm not going to worry about the underside. I don't think it took much of a beating when we were kids. Well, Melinda has a better way of doing this than I do, so she had much better results getting the canopy to clear up. Looks really good. Uh, you know, it's, it's got some age on it. That's to be expected, and there's really not a lot you can do about that. You just want to make it look as nice as you can. So I guess the first step will be putting this back, back glass back on because we want to have as much room as possible to carefully put those clips in. And now for the front piece with its three clips, slide the front one in and then just gently squeeze. All right, so there is the cockpit back on our Rattler. Now the next step that I'm gonna do is remember to put these little jet uh, cowling pieces back on these air inlet cowling covers. So they just snap onto the front. Those are done. Now we can put on the engines, thanks to some parts from Yojo Outlet and Museum Center. We have the extra engine piece that we needed on the back that was lost when I was a kid. It's basically snapped on. That one never did stay on all that strongly starting to look like a Rattler again. Now, one of the most finicky pieces of the Rattler, as if this whole plane isn't finicky enough, was the back turret. This was my childhood original back turret, my brother's original childhood back turret, and as you can see, it doesn't have the canopy. But we do have the canopy. I have it in this bag of parts. The canopy was notorious for losing its hinges. It just I mean, actually, see, I'm pointing at the wrong spot. This is actually the front where it clips down. The hinges were on the back. Good luck finding them because they were just barely attached in, in a molded piece uh, to the plastic of this, of this uh, turret. But I was fortunate, as they say on G.I. Joe, knowing is half the battle, and knowing how to pick your battles is a major part of that. In the case of this turret, These hinges are so fragile, I do not want to try and remove it from this gun assembly to get it off. I just, I'm just going to forego the childhood gun assembly and put this one right on the plane so that I don't risk those turret hinges on that turret canopy. I don't even want to put pressure on that turret for fear of breaking it. All right, there's one intact turret. That's a complete rattler. Looks pretty good. And it's in the flight configuration for its intact landing gears. Now, intact landing gears. Well, that was an ordeal, and one I don't want to repeat anytime soon, but the effort was worth it. Our childhood original Rattler is fully repaired, and I've reunited it with its childhood original Wild Weasel, who was sitting up in a shoebox. And he's in great shape because he usually just sat in the cockpit. But the Rattler was worse for wear, but now it's not. And it's in flight mode, which is awesome because now I have one that's in landing mode and one that's in flight mode. And this one will probably end up attacking the USS flag on display down in the eventual retro blasting studio when it's completed. I'd really like to thank Yojo Outlet and Museum Center for the help with the parts. I went to their store and sure enough, the parts were there. I was just click, 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 and I had everything I needed, which was awesome. So thanks for watching this and we will see you on the next one.